Well, hey, thanks so much for checking out another project video. My name is Mitch, and this is Made by Mitch. I'm continuing the kitchen remodel videos, and today I'm showing you how I made this floating oak bar. This thing is a beast and um, turned out really well, so I'm excited to show you how I did it. So let's jump in. After a little bit of chaos in the kitchen, things are finally starting to shape up and look a lot better. When we first moved into this house, we had tile countertops and a tile bar, and so we definitely wanted to upgrade the bar as the next phase of this kitchen upgrade. So the first thing I had to do for this bar project was to get the board all ready to go. And this is a really old piece of wood from my great grandfather's shop. Pretty cool that I get to use this for a bar in my house. So I used the joiner to get one side squared up and then I would run that side against the fence to, to flush up my other side that I ran through the table saw. Once I got that, I could start working on the top. I had to sand everything down first just to have something to work with and then there were several cracks and knots in this piece of wood probably just from sitting around drying out for so long. And so to fill these cracks, I used this black CA glue made by Starbond. They sent me some products to try out and I really do like the CA glue. It's a high performance adhesive and this particular medium thick kind is perfect for filling cracks in wood just like this. You hardly notice that it's there and it sands and polishes up really nicely. So click the link below to check out all their products and you can get 10% off site wide if you use the code MBM. So thanks so much Starbon. So after the wood was all finished, it was time to move on to the support brackets. And I wanted to do a hidden support bracket, but everything I found online was super expensive. So I decided just to make my own. And doing this was actually really simple. I just cut up some flat stock steel that I got at the big box store uh, using an angle grinder. Then I'm using a grinding disc here just to take the sharp edges off of the steel. I actually went in with some sandpaper and even got it a little bit better just that, so that way whenever I would go in to paint it, it the lines were nice. Um, so then I laid all the bars out where I wanted them to be uh, and then I marked them on the top of the wall here. So what I'm going to do is actually countersink these bars into the top of this wall. And so after that I just took the steel down and I kind of marked where my holes would be so that I would drill into the bar. And so I used a drill press to, to drill these holes out. And then I went and used a countersink bit so that way when I screwed it into the wood the screw head would be flush with the steel. After the steel was all drilled and ready to go, I used some mineral spirits just to clean all of the oils and things like that off of, off of the metal. That way the primer and the paint would adhere to it a little bit better. And then I did that, I primed all of these pieces of steel. Um, I think I put two coats of that on there and then I went through and I painted them black. And they turned out so nice. Now things get really fun. I had to chisel out the top of the wall so that these bars could countersink down into them. And so what I did was I just used the chisel and I would take a little bit of material out and then I would check with the bar. I, could just, I just kept doing this over and over until the bars sat in there perfectly and, and that's it. So there are a couple places where, where I was putting the bar, there were nails. And so I actually pried the nails up and then I would use the chisel to go under the nails and then I just drove the nails in. Um, at the end and make sure you're checking your level through this whole process um, so that way you know everything is going to be even and it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be but this was a little bit more of a complicated part of this project so all the metal is officially ready to go now it's time to focus on this wood so after I got all of the holes filled with the star bond adhesive I went in and I sanded everything really really well all the way up to 220 grit I wiped it down really well with a tack cloth, then I added a coat of pre-stain before applying the coat of stain. This is the first time I ever used pre-stain and it worked really well, it actually brought out the wood grain really, really nicely. And after applying one coat of stain, I went through and wiped everything off with a dry rag. And also off camera, I did apply several coats of lacquer on the top of this, but I for some reason didn't film that part. So the next thing was to go in and start installing the bars. And this was as simple as screwing them to the top of the wall. And my wife captured these couple clips I wanted to share with you. Check this out.
By the way, this is Ayan, the newest addition to the family, and this is his video debut. So after this, all the bars were properly installed and it was time to install the wood. And this was easy as just placing it on top of the wall and the bars and then drilling it in place. And I still made sure that everything was level throughout this whole process. I did use a wooden mallet to get everything into place. Then I just used inch and a half screws and screwed the bars to the wood. I did run a bead of black caulking along where the wall meets the bar, and this helped seal that line that you see there, uh, and it really made it look a lot nicer. But after I did this, uh, this project was complete. I do love the way that this bar turned out, and I love the floating look. It really wasn't that hard to pull off, and it was much cheaper than, than some of the other options, and it, this bar definitely helped complete the look of our kitchen. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to check out some of the other videos on my channel.